fear and fright, but Jesus surely showed them, winds and waves obey His will. Oh, we quickly calmed the tempest when He whispered, peace be still. And He can say, peace be still. And He can say, peace be still. When He says, peace be still, all the winds and seas obey. If there are storms in your soul, He is still in control. And He can say, peace be still to your soul.
Jesus. He took the cross of Calvary's hill. Lord, don't move that mountain that I might better do your will. Lord, don't move that mountain. Please take and turn to the book of Revelations this morning. The book of Revelations, chapter number 20. The book of Revelation, chapter number 20. Glad, glad God's given us a copy of His Word. All right, I hear the pages turning there. Let's have a word of prayer. Our hearts have been full, Father. We are so thankful. You have filled us. You have blessed us. God, you've been so gracious. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for everything here this morning that's been done. Lord, all the songs that's been sung has been lifted up in the name of Jesus. We're, Lord, preparing the hearts to hear the word of God. Here this morning, you know our frame. You know us and our standing. And you know what I stand in need of. And I'm asking that you be gracious one more time. And Lord, may we say everything that you want us to say, nothing more, nothing less. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand there? Revelation chapter 20, verse number 11 is where we will begin our reading. Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 11. The Word of God reads, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small, great stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Our Father, one more time we pray and we are truly... Asking of you here now, my God, you know every person that's underneath the sound of our voice. Lord, you see them, and Lord, you know exactly who they are. Lord, I pray now that you reveal unto them their heart. I pray that the Holy Ghost of God would open up their understanding and let them see their condition. Lord, I believe that there are people that are lost and they need to be saved this morning. And I believe as well, dear God, that you're mighty to save. And you're able to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. I want to be mindful of you. And I, I, I pray right now that I will. And God, you'd help us to tread lightly and to walk softly, Lord. God, help us to deliver the word of God, Lord, in a way, Lord, that's again pleasing to you. And Lord, we'll draw all men nigh. This we're asking in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing and reverence reading God's word. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The book of Revelations here, church, is a book of prophecy. It is a book of God's will of things to be done in the near future. Matter of fact, John said these things must shortly come to pass. And I'll let you know if you're taking notes, I got some scriptures for you to go back home. If you want to study these out, that's perfectly fine. The things that must shortly come to, fa to pass in God's timeline, the very first one there is the rapture. 
The rapture of the church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 13 through 18. The Bible tells us that when Jesus steps out on that cloud and with the trump of God, with the sound of that mighty voice there, he's going to call us home to be with him forever in heaven forever. Hallelujah. And I'm so thankful that I know that I'm a part of that rapture and Jesus calling home his precious bride. Revelation chapter 4 and in verse number 1 is a very good symbol of that picture there uh, when John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day and in verse number 1 of chapter 4, Revelations, and God told him, come up hither, and he was caught up out of the world. Now through Revelation chapter 6 and verse through, verse, uh, chapter 6 through chapter 18 is what's called the time of tribulation. The time of a tribulation. People say we're in bad times now. They ain't seen nothing yet. People are saying that things are rough and oh how the economic system's about to fall apart and things are just collapsing. My dear friend, when God pours out his vows, when he blows the trumpet and he breaks those seals there, this world has not seen anything yet. There's going to be a troubled time there of tribulation. But then in Revelations 19 and Revelations 20 as well, we learn of the reign of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when we, the bride that's been caught up with Him in heaven, we're going to be saddled up there on those horses. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ is riding on that white stallion and He's coming back to earth and it's what's called the millennial reign. He's going to rule and reign on earth for for a thousand years, hallelujah. Everything's going to be done right, amen. Hey, why? Because King Jesus is going to be on the throne on earth, hallelujah. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse number, uh, rather uh, chapter 20 and chapter 22, we see that God's going to make all things new. There's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be a new earth. There's going to be no more tears that's going to be shed there. All things are going to be made new. And I'm so thankful, church. Why? Because when you learn about the things that's going on and how things are old and being defiled and corrupted here on earth, God said He's going to get rid of the old heaven and the old earth and all things will be made new. Hallelujah. Now, before there's a new heaven and a new earth, there must be what is called the final judgment. The final judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the text here, we are brought into the king's court. We are brought into the Lord Jesus' court. It's called the great white throne. And the one who sat on this throne, who sits on this throne here, heaven and earth flat fly eyes away and flees away there. Heaven and earth is trembling there at the, the sight of Jesus Christ. His eyes are a flame of fire and his hair is white as wool there and his feet are fine brass. And may I say that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the one that's sitting on that throne. He's the one that's going to be judging every single person that's brought before him on that day. In John chapter 5, the Bible reads here in verse number, John chapter 5 and verse number 22, Jesus says, For the Father judgeth no man, but he hath committed all judgment unto the Son. For all men should not honor, for that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him, that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but pass from death unto life. Verily I say unto you, the hour is coming, now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear him shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so even the Son has life in himself. He that hath him, or, uh, he, and hath given to him authority to execute judgment judgment also because he is the son of man. Jesus is doing the judgment here. Now we read in the text and the Bible is telling us of this judgment that Jesus is there on the throne and the books are open. The books are open and the book of life. There are many sets of books that are open here on this courtroom setting and may I say everything that's recorded in these books are right 
righteousness. Everything is recorded in these books. They are right. There's nothing wrong. There's no in imperfection. There's no error with God. So in this courtroom, the books are open there. The 66 books that you hold right there in your hand is one, co is one set of books that are open. We call it the Word of God. It's God's holy word, the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, hallelujah. And that there, my friend, is open before all mankind. Why are you saying that, preacher? This is the standard by which all men and women shall be judged by the word of God. But also we find out in Matthew chapter number 12 and in verse number 36 and verse number 37, I believe this right here, but there are books now. The books that are open are also the works of man. The works of man. What are your works? Every word that you say is being recorded right now in heaven. The Bible is telling us that in Matthew chapter 12 and in verse number 36, Jesus said every idle word is being recorded in heaven. In Romans chapter 2 and in verse number 16 on this day everything that is said in private and done in private will be brought forth unto light there on this day everything that you have done in this body whether good or bad Jesus Christ will judge all who stand before him the books are open. The books of works are open. But then we see the last book the Bible tells us about, which is the book of life. My beloved, may I say to you tonight, well, this morning here, that's the most precious book that you need to be concerned about rather than all the other ones there. Is your name in the book of life? Is your name recorded in the book of life? Now I say, preacher, why does God need all these books? Well, I say he doesn't need all these books. Amen. He is God. <clears throat> he doesn't need all these books. But the reason I believe that God's given us this record here that there's going to be a count of all these books is that God is intimately involved in every single person's life. That's how much he loves you. He loves you that he's recording your life right now. Everything that you're doing and everything that's going on, <clears throat> the God of heaven is recording every single word of it. Mm. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles over there in Psalms 144. Psalms 144, the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord my God, uh, blessed be the God my strength, the Lord my strength rather, <coughs> which teacheth my hands to war, my fingers to fight, my goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, <coughs> and him whom I trust, who subdueth all people, my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, and the son of man that thou makest what? An account of him. God is recording your life. <clears throat> He's recording everything that you say, everything that you do, my beloved. And I want to let you know here today, as we read in the text, in verse number 12, the Bible says that every person will stand before him. Said all, not every person, I'm going to take this back. The, 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 he saw the dead, the small, the great stand before God. And the books were open and another book was open. On this day, those that are unrepented, those that are unbelieving, those that are unconverted, in essence what we call them, they're lost. They will kneel before Jesus Christ. Everyone that is lost, that dies, that do not know Jesus Christ, are going to stand before, rather kneel before Jesus. Right now, what's taking place? Now that's the setting. But right now, what takes place? When an individual dies, their body goes into the grave. And if you die without Jesus Christ, your soul goes to hell. But if you die in Christ, your soul goes to heaven. Say, so why are you saying this? Because you need to know the setting before us. When you die now, your body goes to the grave. Your soul goes there. Whether if you're saved, it goes to heaven. If you're lost, it goes to hell. But on this day, those that are standing before Christ, they're lost. 
Their soul is burning there and is tormented day in and day out there. But on this day, when they stand before Jesus Christ, the body, the dead there, where they're fair in the grave or where they're in the sea there, it doesn't matter. Their body's going to be reunited with their soul and they're going to stand before Jesus Christ. And Christ is going to pronounce a judgment upon those. Jesus will command death and hell to give up the dead. He will command them to give up the dead and it, they will obey. Death and hell will obey. Now the Bible tells us that no matter the person, whether they're rich, whether they're poor, whether they're young or whether they're old, whether they're religious or whether they're an atheist there, a good old boy or a good old girl, a wicked individual there, it doesn't matter, dear friend. I want you to know on this day there's no help. On this day there's no hope there. It's a final judgment that it's going to be given unto all that die without Jesus Christ. It's a final judgment there. What do you mean, preacher? You're not going to be able to bribe Jesus. You're not going to be able to con Jesus. You're not going to be able to lie your way out of it, fight your way out of it. On this great day that the Bible says, it's the wrath of God. And it's going to be poured out upon all who reject Jesus Christ. Those whose names not found written in the book of life. Their body and their soul is reunited for that final judgment. For that final judgment there. May I say to you, my, my beloved, those their name, your name's not found written in the book of life. Say, so what are you saying? That Jesus Christ is recording everything. And if it's you today and you know who you are, you know that you never called on the name of Jesus. I told you, every idle word is being recorded. Every word that's said in private, where if it was even said of your heart there, is being recorded by God. He's going to open up that book and you're going to stand before Jesus there and they're going to read out all the words that you've ever said and not one time in your life that God's given to you, you called on Jesus Christ to save your soul. Judgment's going to be given. The final judgment is going to be given to you and your body and your soul be cast into the lake of fire. Now may I say to you here this morning, we don't know where the lake of fire is at. And to be quite honest with you, I don't want to know where it's at. So I don't want anybody to go to that place. But we do know why it is there. It's for every single person who has rejected the salvation of the Lord. Who's rejected the gospel and its good news that it gives. Can I tell you a little bit about this lake? It's a lake that has no shore. There is no end and there is no escaping to this lake. This lake, it has no life. There's only suffering. There's only separation and sinfulness. This lake, it has no comfort there. There's an eternal pain, wave after wave of fire overtaking the body and the senses there. And it never dies. It never dulls there. There are people that are going to experience this time. Why? Because they did not repent of their sins and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. My friend, I'm here to tell you though, you don't have to go there. Do you hear me this morning? You don't have to go there. Say, preacher, what gives you the authority to say that? This holy book that I have right here in my hand. By the authority of God, hallelujah. You don't have to be that one that stands before Jesus Christ at the great white throne of judgment. You don't have to be pronounced doomed forever. You don't have to stand there condemned. Why? Because the wonderful news of Jesus Christ. When Christ came onto the scene there, the Bible tells us that he preached and the word of God that he preached there was repent hallelujah because the kingdom of God is at hand that's exactly what Jesus Christ said he said repent and believe the gospel may I tell you this here today friend if you'll repent of your sins you'll turn from your sins you'll acknowledge your sin before God you lied you cheated you didn't love God whatever it may be and you tell God I'm sorry I really am sorry that I committed these sins forgive me of my sins he'll forgive you of your sins through the name of Jesus Christ. He'll cleanse you from all of your sins. Hallelujah. And your name will be pinned down in that wonderful book called the book of life. Amen. Amen. 
You don't have to go. You don't have to go before the great white throne. You can be saved and saved today. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm afraid many today. I'm afraid that there are many today that have the name Christian, but they don't have the nature of Christian. When Jesus and Nicodemus had his conversation, Nicodemus is a very religious man of the day that we live in. He would be called a Christian. Every person would say, that's a Christian. No doubt in my mind, that man's a Christian. No doubt in my mind, that man's a Christian. But he didn't have Christ. He lived a righteous life to the eyes of man. But he was missing heaven. He was missing heaven. He comes to Jesus in John chapter 3. Don't believe me, you read your Bible now. In John chapter 3, he comes to Jesus by night. And he said, what must I do to enter into heaven there and all this stuff? And Jesus said, hey, you must be born again. John 3, 3. He said, in order for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. He said, preacher, what does it mean to be born again? What is he talking about? It means that your nature's been changed. Amen. Your nature has been changed. You no longer want to do the old things that you used to do. You no longer want to live that lifestyle of sin. You no longer want to go out and drink and party and dope and fornicate and lie and cheat and steal and live that lifestyle all there. You no longer want to follow after the things of this world. You no longer want to do the things that the devil wants you to do. You want to do what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Why? Because now you've been born again. You've been given a new life. Hallelujah. A new heart there and a new desire. You know what I'm talking about this morning. You've been changed. You got that new nature on the inside. Oh, I'm talking about being born again. Hallelujah. Church, I'm telling you this here. We make too many exceptions in the day that we live in of this thing called Christianity. Jesus said, you must be born again. You're not going to enter into heaven not being born again. You're not going to enter into heaven being the old individual. You've got to be changed. The Bible tells us, and I'm going to read this here. We need to read this, the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse number 9, it says, Know you not, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, but adul nor ad adulterers, and effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now I say, well, preacher, well, who's going to go in there? Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, it goes on in verse number 11. and says, and such were some of you. Such were some of you. In essence, what he's saying here, that's the old person. You used to live this lifestyle, but now you had a divine encounter with Jesus Christ, dear friend, and your life has been Changed. It's just like the woman at the well, hallelujah. Hey, there she was and living a lifestyle. Boy, nobody loved her. She made some wrong choices in life. She sinned there, but Jesus met her, hallelujah. And then she dropped her pail, hallelujah, because she had a story to tell because Jesus saved her soul from hell, amen. amen. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? Yes. Have you been born again? And it's not just a song, hallelujah. It's from within, hallelujah. But I do like that song, amen. I'm born again, hallelujah. I'm no longer the one that I used to be, praise God. The Bible says over here in Psalms 34, verse number 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. Beloved, I'm done. This day must come shortly. All that die without Jesus Christ. See, I don't know. You can be... I heard one of the saddest stories yesterday. I heard one of the saddest stories yesterday. There's this dear man was trying his best to witness to another man. And he said this here, you listen well. You die today, where will you 
spend eternity. Well, I've been a member of such and such church for 34 years. Sir, I didn't ask you if you're a church member. I asked you if you died today. Where will you spend eternity? There's only two options. Heaven or hell. Only two options. I've been a church member for 34 years. I've been there every time they've got their doors open. I've been there every time it was a given offer and I was there where everything was going on. It didn't matter. I was there. I'm here to tell you this morning, dear friend, by the authority of God, Jesus Christ said over there in John chapter 14 and verse number 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man come to the Father but by me. You're not going to get to heaven by being a good boy. You're not going to go to heaven there by being a church member. You're not going to go to heaven simply because because you prayed a prayer after a preacher there. You've got to know Jesus. You've got to be born again. I'm just here to tell you now. There's an awful place. It's the lake of fire. Your body and soul is reunited. The senses that you have. We've got them to smell. Right? Oh yeah. I know some of you can smell right now. You smell your neighbor. Oh yeah. The touch. Right? Some of you don't need to be touching your neighbor. Amen. Oh, yeah. We can feel things. We can smell things, right? We can taste things. I, mean, I tell you, you're going to have all that in the lake of fire. But even greater than that, you know what you're going to have. See, you, you good old church person. I'm good. I'm not. There's nothing wrong with me. I haven't sinned. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a good person there. Boy, you're going to have those wicked, outright People living in debauchery and wicked sin. They've murdered individuals. They've done things to dead bodies that I will not repeat. They've done wicked things. And they're going to be there in hell, in the lake of fire. Will you be there with them? The demons and the devils themselves will be cast in there. Death itself will be in the lake of fire. There will be no joy there. I'm just going to tell you this right here. There ain't no such thing as take me down to Paradise City. It ain't grass is green. It's not. I promise you, my dear friend, that's the wickedest song ever it was. The lake of fire. Will you stand before Jesus? Will you? Will you stand before Him at the great white throne? And He opens up that book and says, I don't see you there. Your name's not there. Will that be you? Will it? Church, I believe with all my heart. You read right on over there in Revelation chapter 22, I believe it is. Or 21, that Jesus Christ is going to wipe away all tears from our eyes. Why? We're going to see one after one that rejects Jesus. One after one. Whether well, it's millions or billions. Cast into the lake of fire. You think you've heard somebody scream now, you've heard nothing then. You think you've heard somebody plead for mercy, you've heard nothing then. My dear friend, it's, it's going to be a scene that man can't even fathom of his mind. Of Jesus Christ declaring the end. It's been said, it's been said that time is a thief. I believe that to be true. Because time has robbed some of you of the sense of urgency. Time has robbed some of you of the sense of urgency. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number 1, we can quote it, but do you believe it? Boast not thyself on the morrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So what are you saying? Time has robbed some of you and deceived you into thinking you've got tomorrow. You don't. You don't have it. I don't have it. Matter of fact, we're not even guaranteed our next breath. Do you believe that? Well, then I'll ask you this here. The final judgment, believe this or not, I believe with all my heart, the final judgment is seven years away. So how do you know that? Because Jesus could come today. And when we're raptured up after seven years, my dear friend, judgment's coming. Judgment's coming. The end of all is coming. And may I say this? We know about the end of things. We use it often in writing letters. We put a period at the end of every sentence. When your sentence is given, that final breath is taken, what will be said about you? 
Jesus will only say two things. Enter in to thy rest or depart from me for I never knew you. The final judgment is coming. Are you saved? I ask you with all my heart, are you saved? Are you ready to meet Jesus Christ? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Are you prepared to meet Him? Today's the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Don't think that you have tomorrow. Now's the hour. Father, in Jesus' name, as we give this invitation, we'll give it to all. And I'm asking of you here now that the Holy Ghost of God will draw the hearts of men and every person, Lord, here this morning is ready, prepared, prepared to meet Jesus. Lord, if I know that there are some in our midst right now, they're not. They've never been born again. Lord, they don't know what it means to be forgiven of their sins. God, they're lost. They're lost. Please save them today. May they step out by faith and come to Jesus. Step out by faith and trust in the gospel. Lord, I pray for those that are swelling up with their pride right now. And it's going to lead them to destruction, Almighty God. They're going to be cast into a lake of fire. Oh God, I pray the devil will not get the victory this morning. I'm asking of you, Lord, be merciful. Lord, I pray that you'd tear up and uproot all the lies that they're telling themselves. And Lord, that they'll see themselves condemned, not born again. See themselves lost, oh God. But see them as a candidate to be born again. God, save. I'm asking Jesus' name, save. We ask this again. In Christ's name. Amen. Church, I